Why, good afternoon, YouTube. It's Big Johnson from Big Johnson Brewing here again. Today I'm in my makeshift studio that I've been spending tens and tens of dollars to assemble. I've got this awesome wing back rocking chair going on, a quality plastic table with a wrinkly tablecloth, and some awesome lights that you can't quite see, but we'll sort of spare you the details. Anyway, before we get into today's topic of, of diastatic power, we've got to, of course, crack a beer, and you can't crack a beer without a beer opener of the day. Today's beer opener is brought to you by Stainless Steel, the Vintage Shop, a quality brewing spoon. You be good, or I'll smack you on the arse with this thing. So... There we go. Solved that problem. Today, interestingly enough, we are drinking a wheat beer brewed by yours truly. <laughs> Perfect, I say. A wheat beer brewed in Big Johnson Brewery here. But the problem we faced with this wheat beer is we ended up with, like, I'll tell you exactly. Hold on. First, cheers. And 17. Oh! That's delicious, actually. The flavor, the flavor is all there. Nobody can complain about the flavor. But what happened was, if we refer back to the brew notes, which are further ahead than that, what we had planned was an alcohol of 4.9%. And we ended up getting an alcohol of like 2 to 3%. I forget. I didn't write it down here because I got angry and didn't uh, like what I saw. So because the batch didn't work out and it wasn't really alcoholic, I decided I'm not going to waste space in the keg fridge on this sucker. I'll bottle it and it can do its thing. Uh -oh. Oh. Excuse me. I'll bottle it, it can do its thing, and if it's junk, I can pour the bottles out, whatever. At least it's not wasting precious space in my keg fridge. So, excuse me. We did that, we bottled her up with 220 grams of dry malt extract, thinking that because we missed the gravity, it would be lacking flavor, so we'll add some malt extract instead of priming sugar or as priming sugar and it'll make it all delicious and it's not bad it came out it's highly drinkable it's uh not a bad beer at all but you won't really get drunk and nobody needs a beer like that and to that end i've been toying in the brewery all morning i was away for a week a week ago and then i had to work so I've been neglecting, and I had three beers that needed stuff done, moving, kegging, hopping, etc. So I've done that. Consequently, I've drank various samples, which I used for specific gravity measurements, and now I'm half in the bag. And when I'm done this video, I'm not going to lie, probably going to go to the Mexican joint and eat a couple of tostadas and have another beer just because that is what you do when you're half in the bag. But on to the topic of importance today, diastatic power of malt. I've been having some issues lately, and I'm going to throw some informations out there at you all, and I want feedback to see what 
everybody thinks because my videos are so highly viewed, not reviewed highly, but many people view them like at least 10 or 11 people, you know, so that's a lot of knowledge base that I can pull on. So I'm going to talk about a bunch of stuff and then you're going to comment back, give me some advice and tell me where I'm going wrong. Thank you. So it all began with this beer I called Erison, the Belgian wheat beer. And its recipe was basically 50-50 Maris Otter and wheat flakes with a couple oat flakes in there. Just, you know, because wheat beer needs oat flakes. And we came out with an original gravity of 1.032, which was totally inadequate. Probably fermented it. I didn't even write it down because I got too mad, apparently. Maybe came out at 0 0.014 or 0 0.018, which makes for virtually no alcohol at all. And I was just like, where did I go wrong? So... What I came up with ultimately here is that the wheat flakes, the flaked wheat is unmalted and therefore must have virtually no diastatic power. The diastatic power is the malt's ability to convert starches into sugar during the mash. So if you get your mash temperatures just right, which I can only assume I did, and you mash her up for an hour, you should get the gravity you're looking for. The problem is if a grain has slim to no diastatic power, then you get into trouble. However, it's also said that you need like 30 degrees Lintner. Degrees Lintner are the measurements of diastatic power. They say if you have an overall diastatic power of 30 degrees Lintner or more, you're going to get good conversion. So, Maris Otter Pale is something like 160 degrees Lintner. The wheat flakes are approximately zero. Pretend we give zero to the oat flakes. We still get, because it was basically 50-50, 80 degrees Lintner at least in this mash. But it still didn't work. And I don't know why. So then, if you fast forward on in time, we move on to a cream ale that I brewed, and it was nigh perfect thereby. It was Gilbertson and Page two row base malt with some Vienna, some corn, and some wheat malt mixed in there. And we nailed the gravity bang on. So everything worked perfectly. Further on in life, we brewed, excuse me, a lagered ale consisting primarily of German Pilsner with a touch of wheat and a touch of caramel, and it worked perfectly. <whistles> Lovely. Cannot complain. I can drink this beer all day and not get any more drunk than I already am, so that's okay. Then we come about the trash receptacle which was a stout that I brewed with a whole bunch of dark things that I had leftovers of kicking around. And the kicker here is I used a two-row base malt that I got from a local guy who has a... He's a miller, but he sells stuff. He knows a maltster, a local maltster, who's malting his local barley delivering it to the miller who's then selling it because he's got the retail facilities, if you will. So my friend and I were gifted a bag to do a science experiment with, and I didn't like it. It was a very small grain, and I think when I milled it, it didn't crush it adequately. And I don't want to have to go about readjusting my mill every time I mill my grain, and in this case, I didn't. And then we missed the gravity entirely. We were aiming for 1.052, and we landed at 
8, so basically 1.03, and then got good attenuation in the fermentation, but ended up with 2.1% alcohol. And because I was mad about bottling a batch a few weeks ago, I decided, Walker, we're just going to keg it up. We'll put it in the fridge. We'll make mushroom soup and stout chili until we're blue in the face. Get rid of it and we'll be good to go. So I'm going to... Something wasn't right about that local two-row. Either not enough diastatic power due to poor malting because it's just some guy down the street malting this stuff. Or all the diastatic power in the world It looks good though. Um, the other option is I was too lazy to adjust my mill to get a good crush. I didn't realize I wasn't getting a good crush until after I'd crushed it and looked at it and I'm like, oh, you didn't get very well crushed there, did you, Mr. Local Turo? So we brewed on and had a disaster. A delicious tasting disaster, mind you but an alcohol-free disaster, and anything that's free of alcohol is clearly a disaster. Next week, we carry on to brew another brew, 10 pounds Maris Otter, a whole whack of Citra, a smash beer, and we nailed the gravity bang on. Next week, we brew number for Shea Steam, which comes from John Palmer's book, How to Brew. You can find the recipe in there exactly. And I duplicated it exactly, accepting a few adjustments to account for my efficiency. And we nailed the gravity bang on. And also primary base malt was eight and a half pounds of Maris Otter there. So that worked good. No problems. But then we go onward to the most recent brew, barrel aged wheat beer, five pounds of wheat malt, which is malted wheat. So it should have some diastatic power two pounds of Maris Otter, two pounds of Vienna, and wheat flakes. And we missed the gravity pretty large. But I'm suspecting in this case, and also a similar case back in the day, my propane tank ran out during the boil, and I didn't adjust my boil time. So I didn't boil off as much as I typically would have. So I don't know how to do the math on this, but suppose I was a half a gallon shy in my boil off. Therefore, my overall batch was a half a gallon greater. That could have, well, would affect the gravity in a negative way. And I only ended up with 1.042 original gravity and excuse me, alcohol of 3.2%, which is barely acceptable. So if we take that one and we blame the propane, because we use malted wheat in Maris Otter, so that should be good. Um, basically what I'm looking for in the comment section is all these adjuncts, not adjuncts, but specialty malts like the Viennas in the Wheat Flakes and the Carap Hills in the Crystal Forties and the Cara Munich's Chocolates, Roasted Barley's Carafa Special Threes. What do we think we're actually getting out of them in terms of diastatic power and gravity points. Like I feel when I use in the, okay, random example, my Lagerdale, seven and a half pounds of German Pilsner, a half a pound of wheat malt and a pound of caramel 20. 
expected original gravity, 1.051, measured original gravity, 1.056, final gravity, fermented exactly to a 1.03 as expected and came out at 5%. No, 5.6% alcohol. But that's primarily base malt with a wee sliver of others. If you look... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just confused. Like... You turn over here, <laughs> and you look at the Bryce malting, the malt specs for Bryce malts that they've posted. They tell you the degrees Lintner of the malts, but half of them don't have a value. So should I be assuming that value is zero? Or... But I don't know, I'm confused. This is what I want, is some advice, you know. Um, <clears throat> I'm tempted, and maybe I'm wrong, and I'm also annoyed. Look, I'm annoyed because not everybody posts the diastatic power in their malt specifications, or if they do, it's not in a number that I'm familiar with. And the other thing is, I wonder if I should just stop counting gravity points. Like, they're still telling you that you're getting 80% whatever's extraction out of these malts but I'm not necessarily seeing that. And I wonder if I should start just counting the gravity points of my base malt and ignore the specialty malts. Just do it that way. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Help me out here, YouTubes. You're smart and I'm not. Or there's a lot of you. And only one of me. If only I could get you to watch my videos. <laughs> okay, I think that's all I've got for now. Um, okay, thank you for watching my video. And uh, don't forget to like this video because let's be honest, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I have all kinds of valuable information and valuable questions to ask. And if nobody subscribes, then nobody's watching and then I don't get any information. And that sucks. Okie dokie. So thank you. Like and subscribe because it keeps YouTube alive. Cheers. And 17.